I am Anil Kumar sharing with you a test question on extreme values. The question here is, a conical cup is constructed from a circular piece of paper of radius 10 cm by cutting out a sector and joining the resulting edges. What is the maximum volume of the cup? You can always pause the video, answer the question and then look into my suggestions. So let's try to think about it. So what we are given here is a circular piece of paper, right? Let's say this is our circular piece of paper. Now we are trying to make a cone out of it. So one way of course as described here is that we could cut a piece like this. We can make a notch here. And once we do that, we can actually roll it and uh, form a cone. So we can form a cone which could be kind of like this. Okay, let's say that's the cone. Now in this particular cone, what we are given here is that the paper has a radius of 10 centimeters. So this is 10 centimeter. So this side actually will be 10 centimeters. So that becomes the edge of our cone. Now in this cone, we don't know for different sizes, what is going to be the radius and what is going to be the height. So these two things are not known to us. We need to somehow relate them and find the maximum volume of this cup. So that is the question for you. Correct? Now I hope the question is clear. You can pause the video, answer and then look into my suggestions. Now R and H could be related. This is a right triangle as you can see. So they could be related with Pythagorean theorem. Correct? So we could write here that r square plus h square is equals to 10 square. So that is how we can write. Now that is the relation and as far as the volume is concerned of a cone, we know volume is one third of pi r square h. Right? So now a conical cup is constructed from a circular piece of paper of radius 10 centimeters by cutting out a sector and joining the resulting edges. What is the maximum volume of the cone? So to find the maximum volume, what we can do is we can actually find the derivative of the function and, uh, and then equating the first derivative to zero, we can find the value of one of these parameters and find the height. Okay, so now since we have this, it's better to write this in one variable. So I'll write all in h. So let me write r square as equal to, this is 100, minus h square. So in this formula of volume, I'll replace r square by 100 minus h square. So I have 1 over 3 by r square being replaced by 100 minus h square times h. So we have now volume in terms of height, which is 1 over 3 pi, let's write 100 h minus h cube. So we have volume in terms of height. And now if I differentiate this with h, then, then we can get our answer. So we get dv over dh as equal to, uh, we get 1 over 3 pi and derivative of this is 100 minus 3h square. So that becomes the derivative for the function. To get the maximum volume, we can equate this to 0 to find the critical number, right? So let's find the critical number by equating our volume expression to 0 and so we get 0 equals to 1 over 3 pi 100 minus 3 h square right now this can be 0 when 100 minus 3 h square is 0 right so we'll solve for that now 100 minus 3 h square equals to 0 or 3 h square equals to 100 or h equals to square root of 100 over 3 
which is 10 over square root of 3. So we get our critical number height as 10 over square root 3. And if I substitute this in our expression for volume, we get our answer. Is it okay? So we get our answer from here. Now, another thing which we need to prove is this indeed is a maximum volume. Correct. So for maximum volume, we'll look into this expression here. That's the expression. So we can analyze it at a point which is on either side of 10 over square root 3. So let's do that first and we can always calculate the value for this height. right? So let's take two values which are close to 10 over square root 3. right? So let's see what is approximately 10 over square root 3. 10 divided by square root 3 is equal to within decimals 5.7. Okay, so if I take a value, let us say let us say on this side 4 and on this side let us say 6 and substitute in the expression for volume right in that case substituting a value analyzing the derivative not this we are analyzing the derivative we want to see the rate of change correct so that is the expression which we need to worry about that is the volume we'll use that expression to calculate the volume correct now here we will try to analyze whether the rate of change is positive or negative on either side of 10 over square root 3, correct? So if I substitute 3 here, I mean 4 here, in that case 4 square is 16 times 3 is 48, we will get a positive value, correct? So on this side it is positive. If I write 6 here, 6 square is 36 times 3 is more than 100, so we get a negative value, perfect? And therefore, the rate of change will be positive on the left side and negative on the right side, yielding maximum at the given value. So we have shown that at 10 over square root 3, we'll indeed get maximum. Perfect. Now let's find what the volume is going to be. So we'll use this expression now for 10 over square root 3. So you can always substitute this value, 1 over 3, by, uh, so 10 over square root 3 is, we can write over here, so, so h is 10 over, so 100 minus, when you square this, we get 100 over 3 times 10 over square root 3, is it okay? So that becomes the, the value, which uh, if you want to keep it in uh, exact answer, then this is a good way to to do it. We have 10 over 3 square root 3. We can take this 3 also common, right? So it becomes 9 square root 3. We have taken this common denominator. Pi is still there, right? So we have 300 minus 100, which is 200. Correct? So what I did was, I multiplied 10 by this. We get 10 pi. We multiplied 3, 3 and square root 3, 9 square root 3. When we take this common denominator, it becomes 300. 300 minus 100 is 200. Correct? So, so that becomes the, the exact value. Otherwise, uh, you can always calculate using calculator, right? But I'll leave that for you. So the answer here is 2000 pi over 9 square root of 3. Correct? So that becomes the maximum volume in centimeter cube in the given scenario. So I hope the steps are clear. The critical step here is to understand how this circular piece can be converted to a cone and how do we relate R and H to get the equation of volume in one variable. We got it in H and then we can always find the first derivative, analyze it for maximum and get the result. Right. I hope you understand and appreciate it. Thanks for watching and if you share and subscribe, that'll be great. Thank you and all the best.